Howdy, Jason Lewis here, and today on the Auto Edit Jeep JK Buildup, we're going all in on the suspension. Now, I've been waiting to do this for a long time, and I know a lot of you guys are kind of excited for this too, so here we go. We're going in with a Metal Cloak 3.5 inch game changer system. Now, I went with this because I don't want to lift the Jeep really high. I want to keep the center of gravity kind of low. I like the looks of it here. I've put some other parts on this Jeep from Metal Cloak, and I really like them, so it was an easy call to go this way. There's some other details as well that really help make my decision easy. When you look closely at these parts, you see some pretty beefy pieces, and there's a couple of other aspects that I'll go into later during the install that will highlight the features of this. Now I also shot for the moon and scored some of the six pack shocks, which are exclusive to Metal Cloak, and they're a nitrogen charged high performance unit that offer the most amount of travel per a given shock on the market right now. And I'm stoked because not only do they look awesome, they perform really, really well. So I'm excited to put these out in the field and show you guys how good all of this stuff is. Also, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to install. Let's get going. So to get started, lift the Jeep, put it on jack stands and make it safe. Meanwhile, while I work on this thing, Pinta's gonna be chasing bees out in the yard. It's always entertaining. So at this point, we're basically going to try to disassemble the front suspension pieces and get our junk to droop. And then before you do that, you want to make sure you take care of some of the more fragile bits, like the brake lines and the anti-lock sensor. So we'll take the brackets off that mount those things, and that way we don't cause any damage as we make room for the good stuff. Save all of your hardware at this point. Because some of them, some of it gets used again, and some of it doesn't. We'll take off the upper sway bar link. All right, next up is to get the track bar off. All right, now since I have these really radical uh, shields in here from the fender kit, I am going to go ahead and pull those off, and that's just to make my life a little bit easier. Oop, one more bolt to get at this upper shock mount. Now, for the fun to begin. Let's lower this down. Let's watch everything, make sure nothing's getting tweaked. It looks like these springs Will be a little tricky to get out, but not that big a deal. Ah, there it comes. Okay. Spring spacer, gone. And this is the stock rubber isolator. You're going to go ahead and reuse this, so save that. And I think Pinto needs a frisbee toss. Bring it in here, girl. Let's go. Where you been all day? Come here, Pinto. Hey, big girl. What you doing? <laughs> you want to play some frisbee? All right. I took a few minutes to clean up the front axle and surrounding areas a bit because I'm just weird that way. And then I removed the upper control arms for a little show and tell session. Good. Gotcha. All right. Watch yourself. So I always love to do this side by side comparison and you can definitely see how much beefier the metal cloak stuff is than the stock. And this is the Rubicon stuff, so it's an upgrade from the normal Wrangler. So what you wanna do before you throw this stuff in is measure the eyelet to eyelet distance and Metal Cloak wants you to put that at 18 and three quarter because you're changing your caster angle from the stock one. So as you're raising the Jeep, they want you to put five degrees of caster in this thing and that's just so it handles better uh, for the added ride height. So these things actually came shipped at 18 and three quarter. So it's just time to actually install those. So I jumped back under the Jeep and started installing some of this golden goodness upper arms, lower arms, and then got ready for springs. All right, so now that we got our junk drooped out again, it's gonna be a matter of getting our spring and our new bump stops in. Now, I did the bump stop kit a little while ago, and I recommend it for anybody who puts oversized tires on your stuff, the Metal Cloak Adjustable Bump Stop Kit is pretty good. So what did it consists of are these little pucks here, and you, what you do is you just drill a hole into this perch, and then you can stack as many as you need here. Now I had one on here and had some just very light rubbing up here from the tire. That's pretty good. So they recommend, they recommend to go two 
with 37s in this combination. So I'm gonna up the bump stops to two, and that's just a matter of drilling a hole into the perch there, and then you would capture that with a nut. Now, what I'm gonna do is get the spring in place before I do that, just in case there's gonna be any drama with the fit. So let's get the spring up here. Well, geez, that's gonna be a piece of cake. So we'll put that in. Put the second bump stop on there. And then just back that bolt with this nylock nut here. We'll tighten that in a minute, but right now, just get it started. All right, and now on this side, it was a little trickier, so I used some spring compressors. I got my rubber isolator up there and I got my spring compressors in here uh, to just kind of make this a little bit easier. And now what I'll do is I'll do the same things I did over there and I'll build the bump stops extender inside here. Springs are always scary, but just take your time and it should go all right. Just remember that when they are compressed, they do want to murder you. So always keep that in the back of your mind. So now that we got our spring on and our bump stops in, this side is good. It's clocked into its pocket. Now we have our bump stops in place. Let's go ahead and tighten those up. Let me show how that works. That's a pretty easy process as well. Now to get ready for the six pack. No, not that six pack yet, but the upper shock mount. Simply bolt it in place, mark your hole, drill your hole, paint and install. All right, now for some of the real fun. We have the top shock mount, the hole drilled and it's in place solid. Now it's time to bring in some of the sexiness and that is this thing, the six pack shock. I'm gonna use just a little bit of persuasion at the top here. To get my bolt hole lined up. And there we go. Solid. Get this threaded on. Now they want the red as part of the six pack in the front facing out from the car. So that just kind of bolted in just perfectly like that. And so for at the bottom of the shock, you have these two spacers and you want to space this shock to the outside of the axle. So let's get that started. And the smaller spacer on the inside, boom. That bolt started, and that's it. Shock is mounted. Let's tighten that up. I feel like I'm hugging this thing. It is pretty sexy, so <laughs> it might deserve a hug. All right, that's tight. Use a dab of the supplied lube on each end of the front track bar and install that thing, making sure to get the front axle centered on your Jeep. I used a ratchet strap as a second man to help here. Brake line replacement time. Remove the stock flex lines at all four corners of your rig and replace them with the longer ones from the Metal Cloak kit. On the front, you'll want to relocate the bracket back one inch. So mark, drill, touch up paint, and install the new line. All right, and now for an easy one, we're gonna just put the sway bar extensions on. And that is simply put the ball joint at the top, use the stock hardware, at the bottom and bolt that thing together. The final touch for the front is to zip tie your wheel sensor wire to the new front brake line and sit back and enjoy the beautiful view, but not for too long because as I did the skies opened up and rained like crazy. End of day one. <laughs> 
Okay, so we're now just digging in on day two of the suspension install on the JK here. Now, there's a couple of good reasons. One was I got the front done and the reins came, so it kind of put the stop to the outdoor install here, and I'm not into being miserable out here trying to do this. I want it right, so uh, we kind of had to wrap it up. But then the other one is my buddy Dan, who lives across the street, came over to help me bleed the brakes. Went ahead and did all four of the uh, brake line extenders on this thing uh, at the same time. And when he came over to bleed the brakes, he was like, hey, the Jeep's kind of tall. Can you give me a little step stool to get in inside there to pump the pedal? And I said, sure, of course. Here, I found this little paint pail really quick that he could step on to get in and out of the Jeep. Got in, everything was fine. He went to get out and stepped through the lid and went in, ended up knee deep in five gallons of white paint. It was kind of, Awful and aggravating, but hilarious at the same time. He's a really good sport. So now I owe Dan a pair of shoes and some dinner, obviously. So thanks, Dan. Sorry. So now it's time to just roll underneath this thing, have some fun pulling all the old junk off of here and making room for the new stuff. And as you might expect, I started out the day by giving the rear end's naughty bits a sponge bath. Hey, while you're here and in work mode, it just makes sense. To me, anyway. All right, so now that we have a reasonably clean work area here, it's time to swap out the upper control arms. Now, that's just a really simple process of taking these bolts right off there. You save all of this stuff because you're gonna reuse it to install the new arms. Okay. Check that out. Pretty cool from the factory. We're gonna reuse that, of course, to put that back in. So let's get this arm out of here. Oh gosh, more dirt. <laughs> let's clean it. I know, OCD. But hey, while you have access to these areas, it's kind of nice to just catch up and clean them a little bit. Okay, let's get the new arm in. Now I went ahead and double check my measurements. They, cut, they came with the right measurements here, but you wanna just double check those as per the instructions. And we'll just slide that in. That goes there. This goes back here. Now, another cool feature are these, the, the Duraflex joints here. Now, everybody seems to have their own super joints, but from the videos online and the research I've done, these are pretty rad. So I'm actually kind of stoked to see how they, how they work. Um, what I like is that this bend seems to just fit very similar, like the most similar to the stock arms. See that? And how this is not tweaked in the, in the uh, bracket here? That is actually pretty cool. So to have your aftermarket arms be that good right out of the get-go is uh, promising. So we'll get this installed. The reason I'm doing the tops first is because we're gonna do a little bit of surgery on the bottom of the shock bracket down here at the bottom. And I'm gonna show you that, and that's because of the six pack shocks are gonna actually mount a little bit higher on there and I'm committing 100% to them. So I'll show you that in a minute. And I'll go get the other arm in on the other side and then I'll meet you back down low here and I'll show you what surgery we're gonna do on the bottom of this shock tower. All right, now it's time to do a little bit of trimming and I'm committing full well to those six pack shocks because I really like them. Um, what you want to do here is you're going to draw, they may have you measure down from the, the axle and then also from the top of this flange here. So I've drew a line and what I'm going to do is cut the old shock mount off and then trim this up. And what you end up getting is another three inches or so of ground clearance right here at the end of the axle, right in inboard of the wheel and tire. So that's actually kind of a really helpful and trick little thing. So it's just going to take a little bit of time. And so you're going to just want to cut this old shock mount off and then trim and grind uh, the bottom of this shock mount and control arm mount here. And uh, I'm gonna hunker in and just get that done. Once the cut and grind is done, take a minute to drill the new holes for the lower shock mounts. Same process as the front. Install, mark, and then drill. After that, I painted all the bare metal areas on the axle. Okay, now it's time to just start getting all of this new good stuff on the Jeep. And this 
is what I've been looking forward to all day. So let's start with this bottom arm here. Right about there. And boom. Remember, work smarter, not harder. Now that's located. Can release this and don't get the other side done. And then we put on this little guy, which is the track bar relocation mount. And that gets located by this lower bolt. Now I use this little thing as just a placeholder to keep the lower arm in, up inside this mount here. And then now this bolt will go in as a final install for that. Then install the other two attachment points, just snug for now, and droop your junk one last time for the rear springs to find their new homes. Track bar can go in next, followed by the lower shock mounts. Once those are in, it's a good time to install the sway bar drop mounts on both sides and attach the end links to the new shock mounts. Now it's time for some serious shock goodness. Now each of these shocks is labeled. The fronts are easy because they say front and this one says JKRD, JK rear, driver side. So let's do that. And this is what's called a bar pin eliminator. And that goes through here like this. And then this will mount into where the stock shock used to go. So let's go get that in. And then there's of course an offset here because you want this and the red on the rear to be inboard. So let's do that. And so that will mount inside here. You want a washer on the outside, a spacer on the inside. Okay. Thing is beautiful. So now the shock is supposed to sit equidistant from the sway bar and the track bar here, and it does perfectly. So let's move on to the other side and button this thing up. This stuff not only looks like it belongs here, it was kind of fun to put it on. Give yourself about a weekend to do it. I am so happy to have gone with the 3.5 inch lift. The stance of the Jeep looks absolutely perfect to me now. And there you have it, the Auto Edit JK done. Lifted finally, upgraded suspension. Not only is this stuff beefy and handsome looking, it's gonna perform awesome. I mean, the geometry is fantastic. Those shocks are ridiculous. So stay tuned, the next video will be out and about. We'll probably take it out wheeling. I'm gonna run it down to the alignment shot and get that taken care of. And now for the pay it forward part of the segment, I would like to give away the Rubicon suspension that came off of this Jeep. So go over and follow the auto edit page on Instagram and leave me your reason for wanting this stuff on the post for this video. Sorry, but the only rule is that the winner must be able to meet me in Southern California between Santa Clarita or my work in El Segundo. No shipping, please. So check back for the first off-roading with the new Metal Cloak Game Changer suspension. And until then, enjoy your drive.